So I'm going to start the ball rolling and the first topic in this first session which is the basics of hip arthroplasty revisited. Uh, I'm going to be sharing some views on version and offset in total hip arthroplasty and uh, as we always say well begun is half done. Now essentially THR or hip arthroplasty differs from knee arthroplasty in terms of stability and stability in hip, hip arthroplasty depends primarily on two components the implant position and the soft tissue balance. So version and offset are two components uh, which are in uh, control of the operating surgeon and we have to be very aware of how we restore this as much as possible. So acetabular version as all of you are aware is the angle as which the acetabulum projects anteriorly from within the horizontal plane relative to the pelvis and usually around 20 degrees is the accepted norm. The positioning of the acetabular cup is critical and we have to restore the version as well as the inclination. So first of all the patient positioning is crucial in this uh, type of scenario. Whichever approach you choose, whether posterior, anterolateral, hard hinge, whatever, we are not going to go into the DAA because it is not yet popular in this part of the world. So looking at the patient from the bottom end is where you f fit in the anteversion which is 15 to 20 degrees while looking at the patient from the back is how you fix the inclination or abduction as we call it 40 to 45 degrees. The TAL or the transfer acetabular ligament is crucial in restoring the version and it is a landmark which is present in most of the hips whether we do a complex primary or even actually in most revisions as well. So on table assessment is easy if you use the tile as your reference point whether the cup is antiverted or retroverted too high or too low. So robotics is not exactly a key here. The safe zone as uh, propagated in literature uh, is quite crucial in avoiding dislocation whether it's anterior or posterior and this is something which we have to all adhere to. Now this is something which you will have a lot of literature recently on spinopelvic relationships and acetabular version. Suffice to say that if the spine is fused in kyphosis surgically or due to a pathology, decrease the antiversion of the cup. So that's the take home. If the lordotic fusion, then increase it. Coming to the femur, the, again the antiversion is the angle between the projection of the neck relative to the condyles usually around 10 to 15 degrees in infants it's more and an increased antiversion gives you a in towing gait. The femoral version usually is a eyeball scenario for most surgeons. The native femur morphology restricts or dictates it as much in the uncemented system while in the cemented system we have some leeway and surgical technique is crucial for that. Cases where proximal landmarks are missing the, the antiversion is with reference to the distal femoral condyles. Now we have stems available which allow us to do these adjustments, notably the S-ROM system which allows us to do uh, option of increasing or decreasing the version relative to the metaphyseal sleeve and useful in all metaphyseal diaphyseal mismatch scenarios as in this young lady who had an antiversion of 57 degrees of the proximal femur, we used uh, S-ROM system retroverted the proximal femoral stem within the sleeve and got an ideal picture. The newer modular femoral stems are now more popular and they also give us the option of increasing or decreasing the version depending on the bony morphology and anatomy. So these uh, systems are useful in complex revisions or complex primary cases. The coplanar test is what is now accepted as the a uh, gold standard and a combined antiversion of both the femur and the acetabulum is the goal and this is uh, achieved when you would combine when the limb is adducted and internally rotated to get the uh, face of the acetabulum uh, coplanar with the femoral head. Now coming to soft tissue balance this is as crucial in hips if not more as compared to knees as well and offset is a very important component of this soft tissue balance. Vertical offset refers to the distance from the acetrocanter to the femoral head center and is crucial for limb length correction. While the medial offset is the distance from the center of the femoral head to the line through the axis of the distal part of the stem. An inadequate restoration of this 
femoral offset is uh, not good news as far as the longevity of the hip is concerned. A virus hip will obviously have more offset. So Charlie, uh, the doyen of hip replacement, also designed two stems, the round back 40 and the round back 45, implying that these are the two offsets which were uh, the ideal ones to be used. And trochanteric non-union, where the abductor arm is not functional, did have an increase in the dislocation rate. So if the femoral offset is not restored, we have a compromise of the abductor function, leading to limp fatigue, higher resultant hip forces, and higher polywear, and also an increased risk of instability. So there are options to increase the offset. If you do only a longer neck length, then you're going to increase the offset, yes, but you're going to also make the patient longer in length. So that's not the ideal approach. So there are other aspects like decreasing the neck shaft angle or increasing the neck length with, the, with decrease the neck shaft angle. So variations are possible and you either use decreasing the neck stem angle or attach the stem a bit more medially. It's very important to recognize this aspect that do not correct the medial offset by just increasing the vertical offset. You're going to have an unhappy patient with a longer limb and litigation is going to be knocking on your door. So complete modularity is the name of the game. Today we have systems which give us this option and I implore all of you to understand this aspect and use your implants accordingly. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.